Hey, good afternoon, uh, Realtors. This is Byron King with Austin Smallwood, Mike Christ here at the SCR Studios in Columbia. It's uh, December 20th, uh, 2016. So you have, uh, here my screen just came on. Thanks, Mike. The uh, uh, December 20th, 2016, you got five days of shopping before Christmas and 11 days to learn license law. So this uh, webinar, uh, we'll be talking about the new forms update, the executive committee. Uh, approved last Friday so we'll talk those but you can see scrolling through here this is the screaltors.org website uh, you can see you got Inman as a member benefit to get your news through Inman uh, obviously we recommend you get on zip forms and get your zip forms plus and digital link e-signature accounts going uh, save you on UPS and FedEx and then we got the 10k reports there um, help you uh, list properties and get sellers with uh, good choices on pricing and then the Hurricane Matthew relief. So we'll go um, moving forward. Uh, so you've got uh, New Year's Eve uh, 2017. The new license law takes effect. Uh, the new forms will go in effect. Uh, they'll be loaded up on uh, zip forms. Zip forms is loading the forms now. They'll switch over at midnight. Mike Christ is planning on having both libraries up uh, December by December 31st so uh, the next day you'd be able to switch into your 2017 library and we'll talk about how you can tell you're in the 2017 forms as we go through here so this is the uh, and as usual this webinar will go through so you can see what you you can do on your screen if you want to go back and if you're watching this on a recording and you want to get to the web page you can see here the, the best web page we loaded these up part of the annual conferences is the uh, www.screaltors.org slash legal update. Uh, this is where we put all the draft forms and we ask people to comment on forms. And we've had those up since September. But that's kind of where that's kind of where this is our home plate. We'll be going through forms, but this will be home plate for us. If you want to go through and look at it yourself, you just go to that website. So this is uh, who we are. This is me on the left and Austin's on the right. It's got our phone number there, the legal hotline, 803-772-5206. And you can see down here, you can click and email us here. Here's my email in Austin. My email is always byron at screaltors.org and austin at screaltors.org if you have any questions about this webinar, if you're watching it live or uh, on recording. And a special thanks to our leadership in 2016, 2017. Uh, it was a kind of a two-year project on getting these forms up and running. You see your president there, uh, David Phillips, for 2017. And then down here in the lower right, that's uh, me and Austin's boss. That's Yvonne Smith, uh, chair of legal ethical group chair. And then this is all our staff. Uh, you can see uh, there's uh, me and Austin. Mike Christ is helping with tech. And then Nick Romina, CEO, worked on the forms with the executive committee. So if you need to contact any of us with questions, that's our contact information. And then 2016, uh, when we started this project, you can see President David Kent. And then lower right, our boss uh, in 2016, uh, Rob Whittle. And then again, you get the staff. You need to get in touch with any of us with any questions. You can see the lobbyists. There's two live. There's a lobbyist webinar online. We're going to talk about. There's two lawyer webinars, and then we've got Diana Brothers two webinars, and Rod Smith with LR two webinars. And it's back to the home page. And then if you go to uh, if you Google uh, SC Realtors uh, YouTube, you get to this page. This has all of our videos. Uh, you can see here. And scroll down you can see there's Diana Brothers video when she was at the Broker Summit uh, recently and then over to the far right Diana Brothers when she gave the license law class in Charleston right next to Diana Brothers you can see Rod Atkinson LLR administrator giving his uh, presentation in Charleston and then some of you may have tuned uh, Rod Atkinson for his uh, webinar with us recently and then if uh, Wiring down here, you can see Linda Hoverman O'Neill's wiring fraud uh, scam, email, uh, email hacking scam video. You'll want to watch that. And then, like I said, we've got two realtor lawyer videos on license law and one lobbyist change. So the next uh, web page you want to go to is the uh, www.llr.state.sc.us slash pol slash rec slash. This is the Real Estate Commission. So they got a warning, they got a high volume of calls. So if you're trying to get your provisional license, they basically say you're probably out of luck and they're real busy, so please don't call them. But uh, we'll be talking about their forms. This is down here, the new forms and new uh, language here. We'll be talking about those, going through those. And really, if you're uh, you know, nervous about the new license law, there's really only two 
new forms, two new duties, and two updates. Uh, otherwise, you can pretty much do business as you've always been doing. Um, so the two new forms we're going to talk about, the offer rejection form uh, from LLR and the two buyer clients uh, after the same property, uh, an SCR form. Those are the only two new forms. Uh, the only two new duties are agents, uh, associated licensees have one basically one business day to get earnest money checks to the appropriate spot, either the brokerage or the law firm. And then if you're a licensee and you're a principal, a principal seller for sub owner, for example, or your landlord, you know, I have to advertise your licensee status in your advertising. So, And then two updates, the agency disclosure brochure is obviously updated to include the non-agency new relationship transaction brokerage uh, in 2017. And if you're, uh, like we talked about, if you're a principal, you're a for sale owner and you have a license or your landlord and you have a license, you have to use a trust account for uh, other people's money, be that the law firm's trust account, your broker's trust account, or your own trust account. So we'll talk about those. So the first one we'll talk about is the offer rejection form. So you all have probably been in the shoes of the listing agent where a buyer agent doesn't believe you submitted their offer to the seller. Uh, or you're the buyer agent, you don't believe that your offer got submitted to the seller in a timely manner. So this is a new form. This is basically one of the only two new forms uh, that uh, is coming out. This is an LR form, so you know, real estate offer rejection form. Uh, basically, if you can read it along with me, pursuant to South Carolina real estate license law and gives the code section, this offer rejection form uh, is created by the commission for use when real estate purchase is rejected without a counteroffer. Signed copy of this form is to be provided by the buyer. And you just fill in the blanks, written offer from fill in the blank buyer and the amount of fill in the dollar amount for the property address was presented to the seller on time and date. And then the brokerage firm signs and dates it. So the real estate commission put the brokerage firm on there realizing, hey, sometimes you might be listing for an REO or a corporate seller that's far away and isn't going to sign this. So it allows the brokerage firm to sign it. Now, they did give us permission uh, in writing to add seller signatures. So the, uh, the SCR form. And the zip forms library will have an optional signature line for the seller so that uh, the seller can sign. That'll give a comfort level to the buyer agent that it's uh, really been presented to the seller. And it'll protect the listing brokerage from the seller you know, changing their mind or not being truthful about uh, making a verbal rejection. So offer rejection form, a government form. And then the other update in agency. Uh, we created, uh, lobbied hard for the past eight years, try to get transactional brokerage along with updating uh, you know, team language and education language, uh, the earnest money language and the trust account language. Um, but we've got nine agency relationships in 2017 alongside agency relationships, primarily designed for the commercial brokers, but um, on our forms committee, uh, there was some, the brokers in charge on the forms committee, some of them said this is a great way to reduce risk, getting our ranks agency as the number one lawsuit risk for brokerages. Um, speaking of the forms committee, you know, shout out to uh, 2016 forms committee chair, uh, Peggy Ganey of Columbia, 2017 uh, forms chair, Liz Lodeholt of Charleston, plus all the brokers that served on the forms committee all the licensees that served on the Forms Advisory Council in 2016-2017. Those guys and gals did a lot of work this year, so we'll get to their forms in a minute. But this is the uh, basically the old agency disclosure brochure. Like I said, now that we have non-agency, they had to rename it. So you can see at the top, South Carolina Disclosure of Real Estate Brokerage Relationships, because you got an agency relationship potentially, or you could have a non-agency relationship, which is transactional brokerage. So it's got all the stuff. You give this out. Uh, you can attach it as a link. You can email it. You can handle lots of copies. Uh, you go through and explain to your uh, consumers when it's first substantial contact when you start talking about real estate with them. It talks about clients and customers and transactional brokerages. And in South Carolina in 2017, you still have all the old agency things that you're used to. So not a lot changes. You got single agency. You got dual agency. Designated agency and sub-agency are all still legal, and we've added transactional brokerage uh, through the new law. And you can watch webinars on those laws and learn a whole lot more. The uh, thing to remember with this one, a special uh, addition down here is signatures. So the uh, signatures, you can have the uh, potential buyer, potential seller, potential landlord, potential uh, leasee, uh, tenant can sign here. Um, the Real Estate Commission, Austin asked the Real Estate Commission, there was some questions about, hey, what if we've already got existing listing agreements, buyer agency agreements? What about uh, 2017? 
we need to give these uh, disclosure brochures back out. The Real Estate Commission said, yes, we recommend that you give those out. Uh, you could email them as links or PDFs or fax them or mail them or hand them out. And for if you have distant folks that are out of town and they can't use digital ink to sign, uh, the Real Estate Commission reminded everybody that the signature is optional. So you could try to get the signature, but if it's difficult, uh, not required. But the Real Estate Commission did recommend that you give these to all your contacts, uh, substantive contacts, uh, in 2017. All right, and then the, uh, the Real Estate Commission created a transaction brokerage template. They've got a lot of, uh, you know, we're just giving this out as a courtesy language, but uh, this is the Real Estate Commission's transaction brokerage agreement. Uh, it's one pager. Kind of the downside of this is they uh, you fill in your description of services. They just put blank lines in there. So you'll see the Real Estate Commission form is a little bit different than the, the Realtor form, which kind of spells out the uh, duties in the Realtor form. And so that's the Real Estate Commission's forms. Now we're kind of switching in, switching gears to the legal update. This is that website we looked at earlier, and you can see up in the top left if you want to go back and look at it, screaltors.org slash legal update. Mike Chris created this back in September prior to the annual conference. Uh, we posted these forms asking uh, membership uh, to comment on these forms, give us some suggestions. People found typos, suggested new language, uh, very helpful. And the forms committee worked long and hard. Uh, Peggy Ganey's uh, group met uh, throughout the year working on these forms with the forms committee, the brokers on the forms committee, and the, uh, associate, and the licensees that are on the forms advisory council. And even it going into 2017 group, which switched over to after the NAR conference. So it's been a big help. You can even see, you can even get the LR forms off of this page. So you can see all the forms. Um, this first one, uh, we actually, that's uh, Form 312. We've actually had that a while. That's the one where you can set up where you're rejecting everybody, setting up multiple offers. Uh, you got a four way cross check. This is for brokers in charge with a trust account. Uh, Austin's going to talk about the short office policy when I get through these forms shortly. Uh, the long uh, office policy, Austin, again, is going to talk about the long office policy after we get done. Form 120 compensation agreement, that's a long-standing uh, form that we've been using. Primarily, it's been used in the past when you've got a, you know, say you've got a buyer client and a for sale by owner, and you want that for sale by owner to pay your, compens your commission, you could use it there. Or say you're outside your home MLS. So MLS is your contract when you're uh, to get compensated as a buyer agent in 2016. But if you went outside your MLS, you no longer have that MLS contract to get paid. So we'd use Form 120 uh, to get paid. Say you're from Charleston, you come up to Columbia uh, to help you know, your buyer client, and you're not in the MLS. You don't want to join the MLS because it costs money. You're only doing this one deal. You could use Form 120, have the listing brokerage sign Form 120 prior to submitting the offer. Um, so that's an existing form. And then we get into our forms, the new forms uh, down below. Uh, form 136, that's the uh, transaction brokerage agreements. Uh, we basically have one for the seller, one for the buyer. 136 is kind of the uh, exclusive buyer side transaction brokerage. 138 is the one pager. It's similar to the LLR form except it spells out the duties. This is kind of the non-exclusive transaction brokerage agreement. This can be used for buyers or sellers because um, it's a short form. And then 221 is the exclusive transaction brokerage form for the seller. So that's the 136 uh, is the uh, exclusive transaction brokerage buyer. 221 is the exclusive transaction brokerage seller. Uh, 138 is the short version of that, and that's a non, basically a non-exclusive transaction brokerage agreement. Um, one pager similar to the LR form, but spells out the duties, and we'll go through those as we get, move along. 140 is the other new form. Remember, we had two new forms. We had, uh, remember, the LLR form uh, that was the offer rejection form. So there's really only two new forms if you want to keep doing business like you've always done. So you've got the offer rejection form is the uh, new form. And then going back here, the um, 140 multiple buyer. This is when you're a buyer agent. You have two buyer clients trying to buy the same house. Buyer agency agreement has long stated that that might occur. Obviously, you would protect confidential information for both your clients. Under the license law, this is a new form that's required. We'll be talking about that. And then for your brokers in charge out there, this is the Diana Brothers gave us a model for the trust account four-way reconciliation form. 
and then again you can get the LLR form. So main thing to remember for LLR forms is you've got the real estate offer rejection forms. That's a big change um, that will help listing agents uh, and buyer agents. And the agency disclosure brochure, because we have non-agency relationships in 2017, will change. You'll know, uh, like Austin says, when we go around giving these classes, you'll know you'll have the right form when you see the signatures down here. So look for the signatures uh, after January 1st, and you'll be in the right form. So we'll go back to our legal update page, and the first uh, form that we'll cover is the multiple buyer disclosure. So this is uh, one of two new forms. If you want to keep doing things, the old way, like you've been doing all along, there's only two new forms for you. There's this form, and then again, the offer rejection form. So two new forms. In this form, again, this is the one that the buyer agency agreement talks about, but this is the license law says you have to give a disclosure. So if you have two buyer clients that might be going after the same house, it basically goes through there, and you can all kind of read through it. Section 1, multiple buyers, the brokerage and associated licensees may represent multiple buyers who are interested in purchasing the same real properties. The brokerage and its associated licensees acting as a buyer's agent may offer the same property or properties that interest the buyer's correction. The brokerage is buyer client to other potential buyer clients. The brokerage and its associated licensees will not and shall not give confidential information of one buyer to another buyer client. So confidential information is basically price and motivation. Easy way to remember that. You know, how much would a buyer pay for a property? What's the buyer's motivation to buy? That's the confidential information because that would impact their negotiating strategies. Um, number section two talks about confidential information for purposes of agreement. Confidential information is defined as the terms of the buyer client's offers, the willingness and or ability of the buyer clients to pay more than the offered price, the negotiating strategy of the buyer clients and the motivations of the buyer clients to buy. So basically price and motivation things that would harm their negotiating strategy, especially in a multiple offer scenario. Section three, other potential buyers. Buyer understands that other potential buyers have entered into similar agency contracts with brokers that may involve the purchase or lease of the broker of the same or similar property or properties that the buyer is attempting to purchase or lease. Buyer consents the broker's representation of such buyers. And then in bold print, buyers are solely responsible for obtaining legal advice during the contract negotiations and transactions. That's a uh, code of ethics. Uh, you have to recommend getting legal counsel, and uh, real estate licensees recommend getting legal counsel. So the brokerage will sign, the buyers will sign. A lot of times we get questions on the hotline. Uh, hey, who can sign for the brokerage? So obviously the broker in charge can sign for the brokerage, and then any agents with uh, you know uh, written authority or apparent authority to bind the brokerage. So uh, you know based on the hotline, it sounds like a lot of brokers authorize their associated licensees to sign and bind the brokerage. There are some brokers in charge that say, I want to see and sign every document involved. Some brokers are more um, management oriented and delegate that authority to their, their associate licensees. So remember, two new forms, offer rejection form and this form, multiple buyer disclosure. Two new forms, and this obviously is covered in the buyer agency agreement. Uh, that there might be multiple buyers after the same property. This is also covered in what we're going to show you in a few minutes, the transaction brokerage exclusive relationship with buyers. And this is the uh, short form. This is the transaction broker agreement. Uh, thanks to Lynn Fletcher, Greenville, and Mike Johnson up in uh, the uh, Lake Kiwi area that uh, helped us develop this form as a one-pager. And again, remember we looked at the Real Estate Commission had a one-pager transaction brokerage agreement, uh, but it just described the services offered as fill in the blanks. So the uh, SCR form uh, has those blanks filled in. So you can see this is a one-pager. This could be used for uh, a buyer uh, customer or a seller customer in 2017 transaction brokerage, taking customers all the way through closing. Uh, will be legalized. So this is basically your non-exclusive transaction brokerage agreement. You can use it with a buyer or with a seller, and it's one page. So it, there's a you know it is obviously limited. Uh, the advantage is it's one page. It's simple. This might be something. Say uh, you've got a for sale by owner that has found a buyer. They come to you. They look for X amount of money. Uh, we would like you to basically help us get the paperwork, help us figure out which lawyers are good to use for real estate transactions, maybe which inspectors are good for real estate transactions. So you can facilitate 
the transaction. You would not represent the buyer. You would not represent the seller. You're basically representing, as Diana Brothers likes to say, you represent the transaction. You are a transaction brokerage. So this is a big change. This has not been legal until January 1st coming up. Uh, this is Again, this would be a help for our commercial practitioners, but there are some brokers in charge that look at, hey, agency is our number one lawsuit risk, and transaction brokerage minimizes that risk. So this is a one-pager, so you could fill it in. Say you're dealing with that scenario where a for sale by owner's already got their buyer, and say the for sale by owner's going to pay you, you would just fill in the customer name as the seller, uh, the brokerage name as transaction brokerage, subs of the terms and conditions stated in this contract in accordance with the terms of this agreement, customer agrees to compensate the broker. And a key word for all this, when your transaction brokerage is facilitate. So you always want to say, I'm a facilitator. I facilitate the transaction. I'm an administrator. You want to avoid any words uh, like agency when you're in transaction brokerage. Facilitating the purchase or sale of the real estate described below. Brokers described as a licensed real estate Real estate broker in charge, which includes the broker's associated real estate licensees. Section two, for the purchase purpose of this agreement, customer desires to use checkbox. Purchase, sell, lease, real property, personal property must be addressed in a separate agreement described as below. In our scenario, a for sale owner that's found a buyer, you probably check residential, um, you probably check sell, um, and then you describe with the property address, you get the tax map number, you put the, you know, the price uh, that they've agreed to. Um, and then you, if you're handling the, on the buyer side, say the buyer was going to pay, you could put the buyer's name at the top uh, and say they were looking for properties, you could almost like a buyer agency agreement, put a price range, uh, de general description of the property, general location, or any other information there. And then who's, who's paying you is whoever signs below, and it says the customer agrees to compensate the broker, you could make that a flat fee, dollar fill in the blank or a percentage of the gross sales or lease price amount earned for broker completing the facilitation. Keyword facilitation, you always want to say facilitation, facilitate, avoid any terms like agency when you're talking about transaction brokerage of the real estate transaction described above during the term, and then you fill in the blank with the date when it begins, and it ends at midnight on the date that you fill in. And then uh, customer broker, this is kind of where it differentiates from the LOR form. We fill in the uh, you know, what you're going to do for them. So customer and broker agree that the broker shall provide the following customer services to customer. The broker shall, one, use skill, care, and diligence to facilitate the transaction. Again, keyword facilitate. Two, be honest, fair, and provide accurate information. Three, account in a timely manner for all funds received by the broker on behalf of the party to the real estate transaction. Four, disclose material adverse facts actually known by the broker and that affect the transaction or the value or the condition of the real property and then are not readily ascertainable. Uh, properly present all written offers and counter offers involving the sale, lease, or exchange of property even when the property is subject to a contract of sale. Six, keep information confidential as requested in writing by the customer. And then below it talks about uh, how the confidentiality is handled. Customer agrees to waive all confidentiality except for that information the customer requests in writing to be kept confidential. And then the, the required language per the license law and the real estate commission. Customer agrees that the broker is not an agent of the customer. Customer has not established a client relationship with the broker. So remember the keyword is facilitate, so avoid agency, agent, client words when you're talking about transaction brokerage. And that the broker is not acting in a fiduciary capacity. Customer agrees the broker is not an advocate for the interest of a customer. Transaction brokerage, you're just facilitating. You're not advocating. You're not looking out for anybody's best interest. Uh, customer agrees to be responsible for verifying wiring instructions. So you, if you're not aware of the email hack wiring instruction scam, you need to watch the video that we talked about on the YouTube channel with Linda Hoverman O'Neill. It's very eye-opening. The hackers will hack in your email and give false wiring instructions to your clients that could happen on the seller side and the buyer side. So this is a warning to try to uh, bring up that conversation when you have with your buyers or sellers. And then ethics, you have to recommend they get legal counsel. So it talks about in bold, uh, parties are solely responsible for attaining legal advice prior to signing the contract. Parties acknowledge receiving, reading, reviewing, and understanding this contract. The LRs, SC Disclosure Real Estate relationships, that's the new agency disclosure brochure name, uh, because we now have non-agency in addition to agency relationships, any transaction brokerage agreements and copies of these documents, and the parties sign, 
uh, the brokerage signs, obviously the broker in charge can sign or any uh, parent or written authority associated licensees could sign and bind the brokerage and then you have the fine print talks about our we have con, uh, SC Realtors owns this copyright and we recommend you consult an attorney before signing. So that's the short form. So the short form, remember we got two new forms. You got the uh, offer rejection form and you got the multiple buyer disclosure. You've got the agency disclosure brochure is updated with signatures and you've got the LLR short form transaction brokerage and the SCR short form transaction brokerage. All right, and then that segues into our, and so the, the short form is kind of a non-exclusive. It says, hey, you're going to pay me if I facilitate it, but it doesn't bind the buyer or the seller to work with you in transaction brokerage. So we have two longer forms. These are based on the Colorado forms. Colorado has transaction brokerage for a number of years. So these are basically the exclusive uh, forms, exclusive right to buy transaction brokerage agreement. So this is for your buyer. And then there's a, an exclusive right to sell. This would be if you're listing a property as a transaction brokerage. So you can still, you know, 2017, you can still do business just like you've always done. You can have a buyer agency agreement, exclusive buyer agency agreement, or exclusive agency buyer agency agreement. Or now you've got a third option, the exclusive right to buy a transaction brokerage agreement. And you still in 2017 have the exclusive right to sell or exclusive agency. A listing agreement and a third option on the sell side, the exclusive right to sell transaction brokerage agreement. So brokerages will make independent business decisions to practice transactional brokerage. It is legal. Uh, so realtors have to cooperate uh, with other realtors. It is a new business model, so realtors want to be careful about, uh, you can make individual business decisions, but be careful about you know, two or more brokers, uh, two or more companies getting together and talking about boycotting anybody or price fixing anybody. Um, make sure that at meetings you don't discuss any kind of boycott of business models or price fixing uh, to harm business models for antitrust reasons. So you got the short form, non-exclusive, can be used for buyers and sellers. You've got the long form, uh, which is an exclusive right to buy a transaction brokerage agreement for the buyer. So this is uh, you know, kind of your third option. We talked about right now you've got the buyer agency agreements, the exclusive right to buy buyer agency agreement, the exclusive agency buyer agency agreement. And in 2017, add to those two, brokers have a choice to even practice a third one, which is transaction brokerage, facilitation, non-agency relationship. So we'll go through this form. Uh, it's laid out in a way similar to an agency agreement, but this is a non-agency agreement. So it goes through, talks about who the buyers are, who the brokerage will be. Um, it talks about what this is about. So this is a legal binding agreement in, by the buyer and the uh, buyer's exclusive brokerage uh, to do transaction brokerage. Buyer, just like the buyer agency agreement, agrees to do everything through the broker regarding selling the property. So, and then you fill in the, you know, what kind of property are they looking for? Uh, you would fill in, you would check box the, you know, the type, and then you could fill in general description, price ranges, general location, preferred terms, others. And then it talks about what the broker is going to do. So this is different from an agency agreement. Some of the duties are more on the facilitation side versus the advocacy side. So we'll go through it. So number three, broker's duty, the broker shall provide the buyer meaningful explanation of transactional brokerage. And then it goes through and talks about the broker's license to be a broker. And then it talks about um, you're, gonna, you're gonna be kind of ministerial duties. Basically you can, and I'm right here in this third paragraph down, uh, you're not representing anybody. You can write, convey offers. You can provide information and aid concerning other professional services. That would be like an inspector, a closing attorney, or lender, not related to real estate brokerage services being performed. Just doing those ministerial duties does not create an agency relationship. So you see a lot of language in here that this is not an agency agreement. This is a transaction brokerage agreement. This is a way that you could exclusively represent a buyer and reduce some of your agency lawsuit risk because you're not an agency. So you want to be careful not to cross the line and go into agency because then you, you don't have those uh, defenses. So the broker may offer transaction brokerages to buyers and sellers during the transaction. You might be representing a seller client and a buyer transaction brokerage buyer. You might be representing a for sale by owner um, and a buyer transaction brokerage relationship. Um, or you might be representing buyer and seller in transaction brokerages. 
So again, you'll see the language that was in the short form. This is right out of license law, what you can do, what you shall do as a broker in transaction brokerages. Buyers and sellers who do not establish an agency relationship with the broker and use the services of the broker or customers. Uh, buyer and broker agree that the broker shall provide the following customer services to buyer. The broker shall, number one, use skill, care, and diligence to facilitate the transaction. Number two, be honest and fair and provide accurate information. Account in a timely manner for all funds received by the broker on behalf of party of real estate transaction. Disclose material adverse facts actually known by the broker that affect the transaction of the value and condition of the real property that are not readily ascertainable. Properly present all offers, all written offers and counter offers involving the sale, lease, or exchange of property even when the property is subject to a contract of sale. Keep information confidential as requested by the buyer. And then section four talks about the buyer's duty. The buyer is going to work exclusively with the broker. Basically any buying they're doing on this type of real estate is done through the broker. Uh, there's risk management language also put into this form. So this is why this form is a little bit longer than the one pager. It talks about duties more fully. Uh, and there's risk management language in here as well for the brokerage. Uh, basically hold harmless language uh, when the, the uh, buyer uh, gives false information. Holding the broker harmless is a liability against the seller's failure to provide a seller disclosure and indemnifying the broker against all claims, damages, loss, and expense of liability uh, from the earnest money. Assist the broker in identifying, facilitating, in contracting to purchase, lease, or otherwise acquire. Basically to work through the broker to buy that type of property. Describe, um, provide the broker with the following information that was above about the uh, nature and location of the property. Authorize the buyer's attorney and the settlement agency to give copies of the settlement documents and waive all confidentiality, waive all confidentiality except for that information the buyer requests in writing be kept confidential. And then uh, this paragraph here is right out of license law. Broker further agrees the broker is not an agent of the buyer. Buyer has not established a client relationship with the broker and the broker is not acting in a fiduciary capacity. Buyer agrees that the broker is not an advocate for the interest of the buyer. Buyer agrees to be responsible for verifying wiring instruction. That's the wire fraud uh, issue that we're dealing with. That's getting pretty widespread and pretty dangerous. So make sure you're up to speed on the email hack wiring fraud. Uh, contact the hotline if you have any questions. And then all the options, uh, remember on the short form, it basically just says uh, you're going to pay me X dollars or X percent of the sales price. This one has all the options. Uh, you could have a retainer fee, get paid up front. You could have a service fee, and even with that service fee, um, there's different options in there. Does it is it a set aside service fee, or does it get uh, you know credited against the final payment? And then it talks about uh, the C and D talks about uh, a flat fee or a percentage fee. Uh, that the C is the one where it says the broker is going to try to get the money out of the transaction basically from the seller or the listing broker, either a listing agent broker or a listing transaction brokerage uh, broker. Um, and then um, it says um, broker set forth, the broker cannot obtain payment of such fees of the transaction, um, so the buyer is going to pay. And then D basically says the same thing. You're going to try to get out of the transaction, but if you can't, then the buyer is off the hook. So um, C is the stronger uh, between C and D because obviously D says there's um, could be three people liable, seller, listing broker, or buyer. Uh, C just says I'm going to try to get out of the transaction either from the seller or the listing broker. And then this paragraph right above six is right out of the Code of Ethics. Brokers shall not accept any commission, rebate, or profit or expenditure made for the buyer without the buyer's knowledge and consent. Buyer agrees that the broker is entitled to receive additional compensation, bonuses, and incentives paid by listing broker or seller. Broker will inform the buyer of the compensation paid by the broker. And if there's a written agreement, the broker will give a copy of that written agreement to the buyer upon the buyer's written request. And it talks about the term of the uh, this transaction broker's exclusive buyer side. Talks about, again, just like uh, we talked about, there's a form for number seven. If you have two buyer clients, uh, these are you would not be a buyer client, so you would not use that form. But this informs the buyer, hey, there might be other buyers that you're representing, either uh, buyer agency agreements or buyer transaction broker agreements trying to buy the same house. This basically discloses that, and the buyer gives you permission. Mediation clause, a risk management tool. If you try to mediate settlements to litigate, uh, that's always cheaper, quicker, and more effective. 
Indemnification, other risk management, number nine for the broker. That basically says that the buyer is going to reimburse you for your attorney's fees uh, should some sort of lawsuit arise. Number 10, do you have the uh, ability to disclose the buyer's identity? If they say not, usually on the hotline we recommend you go ahead and have them hire a law firm to either set up a corporation or to set up some sort of power of attorney if the buyer is trying to mask their identity during the negotiations. Number 11 is a powerful risk management tool that limits your liability to your compensation in this agreement for everything except intentional willful acts. Number 12 is code of ethics, non-discrimination on the usual protected classes, race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, marital status, age, disabilities, sexual orientation, and gender identity. And 13, risk management again. It says that they're hiring you as a real estate broker not as a lawyer or a tax advisor or a lender, appraiser, surveyor, engineer, home inspector, or other professional service provider. And the buyer agrees to seek professional advice concerning the condition of the property, legal tax, and other professional service matters. 14 is the sex offender registry. It basically says that the brokerage is not going on the sex offender registry, but if the buyer wants to learn that information, uh, here's how you can get that information from the local sheriff's department or other appropriate law enforcement officials including uh, through the internet. Fifteen, just contract language entirely. It basically sets up the four corners of the agreement. Uh, Sixteen's uh, blanks if you need to add some contingencies there. Um, Seventeen talks about you could communicate electronically with your client. And then right above the signatures is the legal language. Hey, you need to get a lawyer. Uh, you acknowledge getting a copy of this, having time to read this. Uh, you know that you should have got a lawyer to read it before you sign it. The real estate licensees recommend you have legal counsel, and then the buyer acknowledges all that. And receiving the new uh, agency disclosure brochure is renamed the South Carolina Disclosure Real Estate Brokerage Relationships, getting copies of any agent or transaction brokerage agreements as appropriate, and copies, and parties acknowledge having time and opportunity to review these documents and get legal counsel from their attorneys prior to signing. And the buyer sign date, time, and put their contact information, their phone, address, email, and fax number. Broker does the same thing. So that's the uh, basically the exclusive buyer transaction brokerage form. So you've got the non-exclusive one-page form that can be used for buyers and sellers. You've got the five-page exclusive transaction brokerage for the buyer. This is in addition uh, to the two existing agency uh, agreements that you can have with your buyers. And then you've got the sell side. So this is an exclusive right to sell for the folks that want to list properties as a transaction brokerage. Again, you still have the two listing agreement agencies, the exclusive right to sell listing agency agreement and the exclusive agency uh, listing agreement. So this is your third option. Again, very similar to that form we just looked at. You fill in the names, uh, the house or what kind of real estate you're trying to sell. You've got the terms of the agreement. you got how much you're getting paid, how much you're going to pay cooperating brokers. Uh, talks about earnest money, uh, talks about signage, so uh, it says that the broker has exclusive right to display the signs, talks about the buyer, the correction, the seller is going to try to help you, like working with their HOA, um, with the government, utilities, or say there's you know, bad weather helping to keep the signs safe from that. So, Broker's duty, again, this, this talks about your duties under the uh, list on the sell side is the listing transaction brokerage basically says the seller is going to do all their selling uh, through you and it talks about you're going to use good uh, judgment, do your, you know, your due diligence, they have a license, um, goes through there and again right out of license law talks about one, two, three, four, five, six that we just went through on the uh, earlier form and then talks about the seller's duties, they're going to work with you, they're going to give you information, they're going to permit inspections, they're going to allow you to pay for certain repairs as agreed upon with a dollar amount they agree their closing attorney is going to give you your commission. Uh, F talks about uh, allows you to publish the sales data. Uh, G talks about allows you to take photographs and videos and market the property. Uh, H talks about they're going to give marketable title and a general warranty deed. Um, then it's, uh, I talks about they're going to make sure that you get the documents for closing. J, they're going to do their selling through you. Uh, K, it allows you to divulge the um, uh, other offers uh, as, as you see fit as broker. L, to disclose to broker in a timely manner any off-site conditions that are material or mad, material adverse fact. Uh, M, to give you uh, written instructions regarding confidentiality. 
uh, in to work exclusively with you to sell the property and facilitate. And again, this is a transaction brokerage, so there's a lot of language like facilitate, facilitator, ministerial duties. It avoids words like agency um, and advocacy and fiduciary because this is a transaction brokerage agreement. Refer to the broker all inquiries. Hold the broker harmless for liability. Uh, when the seller doesn't do a seller disclosure, the seller is required to do a seller disclosure by this form. Uh, o, to assist the broker giving them reliable information on their, their finances and liens on the property. P, to waive all confidentiality except for information the seller requests in writing be confidential. Um, and then the language here, um, right out of license law, right under O, seller further agrees the broker is not an agent of the seller. Seller has not established a current relationship with the broker and the broker is not acting in a fiduciary capacity. Seller agrees the broker is not an advocate for the interest of the seller. Seller agrees to be responsible for verifying wiring instructions. That's the wire fraud scam we talked about. Number nine says, hey, we may be selling other houses in your subdivision. And seller says, okay. Ten, risk management for mediation to avoid litigation. Mediation settlement. If you're interested in being a mediator, we're trying to get a mediator class going. But mediation is basically self-settlement with a mediator. Uh, that the buyers and sellers hire to sit down with them and work through a solution and then write it down and sign it and comply with it. Eleven, another risk management tool, indemnification of the broker. Again, this basically says the seller is going to reimburse you when lawsuits come about uh, for issues in this agreement. And then twelve is disclosure of the seller's identity. It talks about that. Thirteen, another uh, risk management, just like in the buyer's transaction brokerage, limits your liability to your compensation in the agreement. 14 says the seller's uh, you know, going to be fair housing. They're going to sell uh, to people irregardless of protected classes, race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, and disability, sexual orientation, gender identity. 15, risk management tool, professional counsel. You're just being hired as a real estate transaction brokerage. You're not an attorney. You're not a tax advisor, lender, appraiser, surveyor, structural engineer, home inspector. And you recommend that they do hire those folks as they need. 16, multiple listing services. The multiple listing services have been working on getting ready for transaction brokerage. So contact your local MLS to get updates on what they're doing to implement transaction brokerage. I know the major uh, MLSs, their directors have all been communicating, working on getting ready for transaction brokerages in January. This talks about can go in the MLS that they're a member of, they can offer compensation, and lock boxes. Is a lockbox going on the property and talks about hey you need to secure uh, seller you need to secure all your valuables drugs alcohol weapons animals residents uh, sentimental items identity theft information and then 18 talks about internet marking can you put the uh, advertise on the internet yes or no 19 marketing the property you market the property do you get a contract unless you agree otherwise Maintain the property. The seller agrees to maintain the property. 21 talks about other offers. 21, 2 is agreement to sell. So they uh, agree to enter into a written sales agreement once they agree on terms. 23 is uh, risk management. Says commission rates are market price. They're not, there's no price fixing, uh, no antitrust going on. The MLS and the association and the board do not suggest any uh, compensation. All compensation is negotiable. 24 is a little bit, uh, 24 and 25 are kind of new. Photography talks about the seller conveys all their rights in any audio, video, photography, um, and so that protects the brokerage. 25 is kind of a hot button item, surveillance, uh, nanny cams, uh, security systems. Um, the seller agrees to buy by any laws or regulations on audio and video surveillance of their property. Good thing about surveillance, it deters crime. Uh, you can have evidence in court if somebody's committing a crime in the uh, listing. Uh, but you can't uh, put cameras where people expect to have privacy, such as a restroom. And this allows the seller agrees the broker may disclose surveillance that the broker deems necessary. So for buyer agents, just imagine that you're always under surveillance. Uh, educate your buyers not to talk about their confidential information, their price, motivation to buy, their negotiating strategy to you well clear of the property. And then obviously don't do anything the property you're not supposed to be doing there. Coastal Titans and Wetlands Act, this is for beachfront property. 27 talks about the seller disclosure. A seller agrees to do a seller disclosure and disclose all the uh, material adverse facts, anything that's not obvious. 28, ditto on the lead hazards, such as lead paint. Um,
29 is a disclosure, risk management, 30 is taxes, uh, 31 sex offender. Say you've got a seller that's selling the property next door to them, sex offender could be a big deal to that seller. So this talks about seller uh, reg sex offender registry for the sellers. Tire binding agreement, basically says this is the four corners of the agreement. Got a couple blanks for contingencies. 20, 34 says you can communicate by fax or electronic means. And then all the usual uh, bold print here. You need, you seller need to talk to an attorney. You've had time to do it. You're given a copy of this in the brokerage relationship. And then the seller signs it, puts their contact information. The brokerage signs it, puts their contact information. So basically, uh, Short, non-exclusive transaction brokerage agreement can be used for buyers and sellers. Five page uh, exclusive on the buyer side transaction brokerage agreement. Uh, seven page uh, for the seller side exclusive uh, transaction brokerage agreement. And then for you brokers out there, Diner Brothers helped us develop this form. This is one you would do monthly. This is your four way cross check. You write down all your files that have earnest money in your account. You're allowed to have a minimal amount of money to keep the account open or handle bank service charges. And then you look at your trust account balance, your general ledger balance, your total sub-account balance, and then you explain any differentials. Compensation agreement, this is Form 120. This has been around for a while. This, again, was designed for uh, you've got a for sale by owner, you've got a buyer, a client, you want the seller to pay you, uh, you're outside your MLS, you want the listing brokerage to pay you, and you've got a buyer, client. Um, but this could also be used in transaction brokerage. It doesn't go into your duties. It just says who's going to pay you, um, you know, what the purpose for, buy, sell, lease, other regarding property, the terms, and the compensation amount. So this maybe is a good form that could be used for those, you know, for sale by owners outside your MLS. We've got 19,000 realtors. Some may not hear this webinar, may not know there's a new uh, short form transaction brokerage form. They may use this, and that this would be serviceable for that purpose. And then I'm going to turn it over to Austin. Austin's going to we talk. We did have a few okay. questions that listeners were on the phone. Sure. Go ahead and answer those. Um, on the disclose on the agency on the agency disclosure form, it says uh, on dual agency it says firm. Um, if there are different brokers in charge, does the word firm control? So the question's about, uh, you said dual agency, so it says dual agency exists when the real estate brokerage firm has two clients in one transaction, a seller client and a buyer client. At the time you sign an agency agreement, you may be asked to acknowledge whether or not you would consider giving written consent, allowing the brokerage firm to represent both you and the other client and disclosed uh, dual agency relationships. So these are written by humans. Uh, you know, this is not one of the realtor association forms, it's a government form. So the question is saying, hey, buyer, and up here where it says firm, uh, does that conflict with license law? A little bit. Uh, here, here's the example where you could say this is, you know, it could be written better. Um, this implies that dual agency exists when the real estate brokerage firm has two clients in one transaction. As you all know, some firms are fairly large, so you might have a large firm with separate brokers in charge, separate offices. So, say the company, say me and Mike and Austin all work for, you know, Nick Cremitis Real Realty. Say Nick's our broker in charge. And the three of us each have a office, and we're each broker in charge of office for Nick Cremitis Realty. And say so Austin has the buyer client in his office. Uh, I'm the listing brokerage. One of my associate licensees has the listing. Uh, you could do dual agency there, but also license law talks about separate offices, separate brokers in charge. We're the same firm, but we're separate offices, separate brokers in charge. We could actually go into single agency there. So probably this section could be written a little bit better, but. If somebody drafts forms, there's always something that's going to be drafted better. English is English is a tough language to use sometimes. Okay. What is the advantage to the for the consumer to use an exclusive transaction agreement or transaction brokerage agreement over becoming a client? Right. So this is kind of keep in mind. There's kind of a bunch of schools of thought on transaction brokerage. So some folks say, "Hey, Byron, uh, you know, during the, this happened at the forms committee level and the uh, the uh, executive committee level." So kind of two schools of thought. Um, one is, uh, I really see transaction brokerage, it's just somebody calls me up, they're for sale by owner, they got a buyer. Uh, I'm just going to use, the, you know, and some brokers are going to say, you know, I don't want to do transaction brokerage, I'm not comfortable with it, it's new, it hasn't been around a long time in South Carolina. You know, maybe that broker makes an individual decision uh, to just practice agency like they've been doing. Some brokers might say, 
I'm going all in. I'm no longer doing agency. I'm just going to do transaction brokerage. It's legal. It reduced my risk. Some might say, hey, I'm consumer driven, so I'm going to give choices. I'm going to offer agency and non-agency relationships, let the consumers decide. So the uh, on the hotline, I have had a call years ago where a buyer came to South Carolina and said, hey, brokerage, I want you to help me buy a house. And they said, that's fine. Uh, we need you to sign a buyer agency agreement. And the buyer said, I'm not signing a buyer agency agreement. So under the old law, you couldn't help that, that client, or you couldn't help that customer uh, close on a transaction unless you had the listings. So say you're an exclusive buyer agency office, you have no listings, you could not help that buyer that refused to sign a buyer agency agreement. 2017, you would have an option. You could say, hey, buyer, I can help you out. Uh, you can sign this short form transaction brokerage agreement. It doesn't bind you to me. It's non-exclusive. Or, hey, I'm going to be put you in my car. I'm going to show you a lot of houses, a lot of time involved in my research and all. I want you to be tied exclusively to me. And you would sign this five-page exclusive uh, transaction brokerage. Now, a buyer might say, hey, I want uh, representation. So you'd say, hey, no problem. Uh, we offer a buyer agency agreement. We can sign this exclusive right to buy buyer agency agreement. That means if you buy anything in this uh, description of the property, you're going to owe me a commission or a fee, however we decide compensation is going to work. Or, hey, we've got another option for you. We've got what we call uh, exclusive agency. So if you're out and you meet a for sub owner and you do your own thing, you don't owe us a commission. So there's lots of options. And some of you will say, hey, Byron, what's the advantage of a, a buyer to sign this? Uh, and yeah, you have, you know, it depends on the buyer, what their motivations are, what their desires are. Um, but we have dual agency, and dual agency has been used for years around South Carolina, and there are limitations under dual agency about representation. So it depends on what the customer wants, what the client wants, what the brokerage wants. Um, and so it would be a discussion. This gives you one more option. It's one more tool in your toolkit. And like we talked about, it was primarily designed to help the commercial practitioners, but this has been practiced successfully in a lot of other states. It reduced your agency risks. Um, so there's a whole bunch of factors, a lot of moving parts to it. Um, we have the other one is with the multi it's regards to the multiple buyer disclosure. Um, when should that be signed? Does that need to be standard practice or only when the circumstances, only when a multiple buyer situation occurs? All right, so uh, good question. They said, hey, Byron, this new form, remember we only got two new forms if you want to keep doing like you always do. You got the offer rejection form and then you've got the multiple buyer disclosure. So um, yeah, good question. When could you use this? Uh, you know, at the executive committee, there was some buyer agents that said, hey, I might hand these out like candy, just like the agency disclosure uh, brochure now called the real estate brokerage relationship brochure. Um, because as soon as you get this thing signed, then you've basically have covered your basis. So obviously you have to have it signed when uh, you have two buyer clients, you know, getting ready to submit offers on the same house. But there's nothing in license law that says that you could not get multiple, you know, your buyers to go ahead and sign this. So um, based on some of the, and a lot of this we're going to be learning. It's a new law, new forms, how they work in real life. The hotline's probably going to be busy in January. Um, but executive committee, there's some buyer agents that say, hey, when I sit down, when I get them to sign, uh, they're going to sign the uh, real estate uh, brokerage uh, relationship, the old agency disclosure. When they sign that, when they sign my buyer agency agreement, either exclusive right to buy or exclusive agency buyer agency agreement, or they sign the non-exclusive one-page transaction brokerage agreement for a buyer, or they sign the five-page exclusive transaction brokerage agreement for a buyer. I'm just going to have them sign this, and this is form uh, 140. That way I've covered my bases in the future if I ever have that situation with two uh, buyers going after the same property. And then somebody else asked, what if somebody, a customer does not want to sign anything? Yeah, so the question is, hey, Byron, what if uh, somebody says, uh, you know, like my scenario where you talked about, and that's one call over many years, but a buyer came to South Carolina, came in, said, hey, I want to buy a house in South Carolina, and the uh, you know, the associated license say, hey, I'd love to help you. That's what I do for a living. That's what I'm licensed to do. I need you to sign a couple things. I need you to sign this uh, real estate brokerage relationship, basically the old agency uh, disclosure brochure. Buyer says, I'm not signing that. So you can say, well, it's not really required that you sign that, but I am giving you a copy. Here you go. And I would like you to sign uh, this, uh, you know, we basically have three options. So as we discussed on that brochure, we've got, transaction, our, our office offers three options. You've got uh, 
agency relationships, non-agency relationships. Under agency, we have two relationships, either exclusive right to buy. You buy anything in this uh, kind of range of properties, you're going to owe us the compensation in this agreement. Exclusive agency, buyer agency agreement, you buy anything through us in this uh, you know, description of property, this range of properties, you're going to owe us. If you go find a for sale by owner and buy it yourself, you don't owe us. Or we've got uh, you know, non-agency relationships. We can offer you the non-exclusive one-page uh, transaction brokerage agreement. Or we've got the five-page where you're exclusively bound anything you buy in this kind of range of properties, you're going to owe us the compensation described here. And Mark says, you know, jump in the lake, I'm not signing anything. You know, a, uh, this is a red flag, this buyer might be difficult to deal with. He might say, you know, have a nice day, I'd be happy to refer you to somebody, but I'm not going to work with you. Or you could say, license law talks about transactional brokerage is presumed uh, verbally, but then that puts you in uh, potential conflict with the Code of Ethics. Article 9 says, you know, for the protection of parties, you can get agreements in writing. So my recommendation would always get it in writing that covers you from license law and ethics complaints. It makes the terms clear to everyone. If you try to do things verbally, a uh, good chance you're going to get sideways uh, and somebody file some complaints against you. And somebody that won't sign any document, um, that's a little of an aberration, unusual based on the hotline experience. I would say that that may be a red flag. You may not even want to work with this guy. And then uh, I'm going to turn it over to Austin. And There's the short form and then the long forms underneath here also. All right, thank you. We're going to go briefly over um, two of the, sh the short office policy, the two office policies. Um, this first one is, is just a three-page form. Um, license law only requires that six things be in your office policy. Um, so this is the office policy that you'll want to fill out, and if you're ever, you know, have LOR come to your door, an investigator, you can just hand them this three-page form as opposed to your longer form that talks about, you know, different office procedures and, and things of that sort. So the only things that are required via from the license law um, are to show which sort of agency relationships that you engage in. Um, like I said, there's no require. you can check any combination of these boxes. Um, you also need to put who you cooperate with or if you don't cooperate with anyone. Um, the next is you need to have in there when you have your agents give the you know, the agency disclosure form, or, which is at the point of first substantive contact. Um, the next thing that you have to show um, is what services you offer to customers. Um, so here we have whether or not you offer transactional bro transaction brokerage, um, and then what you do there. Um, the next is you have to explain what scope of what's what you offer clients, and so that is that's available here. The new license law also requires that you have whether or not you allow teams and whether or not you operate have or operate as a limited function referral office. And then lastly, you have to have a fair housing policy. That is the only things that are required by a license law. So like I said, this is your this is your basic form that if you're ever asked you have an office policy, you can just print you know fill this three page form out. Now obviously, you know, with having a brokerage, you may need more information than just that. So that's why we have a long policy. Um, just to note, this is a template. This does need to be filled out by the broker by the broker in charge. Um, it does need to be edited, so do not simply print out this form and and ha and have your agent sign it because it is not fully there. There's some work that needs to be done by you. Um, the previous long version we had on our website was in excess of 100 pages. We had several members that said, "Hey, I would really like to have something that's a little shorter because, you know, that's more likely to get my my licensees to read it." So we have now reduced it to, to 19 pages. But with that, there are going to be several things that you, as the broker in charge, are going to need to supplement because this is just kind of the bare bones um, outline of things that we, you know, through the hotline, have felt were the most important things to have in this policy. Um, also, like I said, we have this on our on our website right now. If you call, if you look through this and think that there is something that we just we, we egregiously missed, please let us know. And we can try to add that in there. Um, so, like I said, we the basic things we have in here. Uh, we have another fair housing decoration. We have you know what happens when you have a dispute, how you resolve it, um, an explanation of independent contractor, and the termination of the affiliation. This is an important thing because when somebody when a when you leave a brokerage or if you're the broker in charge and somebody leaves your brokerage, you want to have a policy in place of, of what happens to any existing cli you know, clients and, and compensation. 
um, have about equal you know, equal opportunity. Um, harassment, that may be something as a broker in charge that you would want to supplement um, if you have any additional procedures. Um, and this is why we make this document. Most of our forms are, you know, all the other forms are in PDS. We intentionally left with this one in doc form for you, for brokers to, to edit as they see fit. Um, have in here about personal assistance because that is delineated in the license law about what they can and cannot um, do. Talk about confidentiality. Um, legal and tax advice. The, the best advice there is to, to call the, the hotline. Um, document control, the biggest no thing to notice here um, is the new license law no longer requires that you keep closing documents. Um, since there were some issues with closing attorneys providing those documents to, you know, to agents at closing, that is no longer a requirement for, for the five years. I'm talking about agent safety, which is a big thing. That may be something that, you know, we have just some, you know, five pointers here, but that may be something is, as an office that you may put in your own procedures. Um, once again, we talk about clients. This is a good example of, we have kind of some potential examples of what kind of client services you can offer, but obviously these are all examples. So you as a broker in charge will need to go through this and find the one that best suits what you as your, you, what your brokerage does and, and potentially edit it that way. The next thing we would have here is, is, is customer services. As Byron mentioned, um, the license law presumes that transact, you are a transaction broker um, upon point of first substantive contact. So this goes through um, you know, suggesting that customers would sign a transaction agreement, talks about the services that may be offered, and then the services that shall be offered. Um, once again, we have in here about the disclosure of the real, uh, broker's relationships, which is one of those six things that is required. Um, mandatory buyer agency, you know, a lot of that is talking about how to cure potential conflicts of interest. Um, cooperation and compensation policy, um, that is something that you as an individual broker will need to fill out and put in um, which way, in it, like I say, especially, you know, which type of agency relationships that you cooperate with. Um, we have our basic you know, RESPA and antitrust um, information. This is a new thing we added in here is teams. So obviously, if you're a broker that require that allows teams, you may want to um, you know increase the the amount of information that's in this. Or if you don't have teams, then you may not need to have this in here at all. And it's the same thing with this limited functional referral office. So this is mainly a notation that we we let you know that that you know whether or not you have if you have one, there needs to be a policy on it required by office by license law. But if you do not. Um, have a limited functional referral office or operate as one, then you do not need to have, then you just need to simply need to have on that short form that we don't have one. And then a new thing we added was the do not call list because we've been getting increased complaints about, you know, people saying that they're on the do, on, they're on the do not call list and they're getting, you know, called about their listings or, or uh, buyer clients. So this is something that you want to make sure to go through with your licensees and have your own, you know, your own internal um, procedures for what to do if a do, in a do not call situation or and, and then you know our suggestion here mostly is to have somebody that you designate in your office as kind of the gatekeeper of all that of all the different lists and that you need to have a federal list a state list and then you need to have your own internal brokerage list um, and if you have any questions on that um, the best thing to do is to give the hotline a call um, but like I said this thing is is is, is intentionally short um, because we didn't want to kind of overload it with information, but if you know if you do read through this and see any sort of a glaring omission, please do do let us know. We will, you know, do our best to try to supplement it as, as need be. All right. Thanks, Austin. Ed. We're wrapping up, and uh, remember, there's about 14 hours of license law videos at uh, SC Realtors uh, YouTube channel. Here we've got. Uh, Two from Diana Brothers, two from Odd Atkinson, two from me and Austin, and one from our lobbyist. Uh, don't forget to watch this video on wire, on the email hacking wire fraud scam. You need to get it. Learn that. Mike, you want to talk about the uh, YouTube? Uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for the actual webinars, um, if you just go to the S, uh, go to YouTube and look for SC Realtors, or you can go to youtubecom slash Realtors. And then if you just click playlists, uh, you'll see the SCR webinar series here, and this is where all of our webinars are listed. So you could see a lot of the recent ones um, have to do with uh, the license laws and the form updates. 
got a license law update down here and we'll be posting this webinar within the next 24 to 48 hours and it will be listed here as well if you want to go back and rewatch it. So. Super. And big thanks to Mike. He does all the webinars and our videos. Does a great job. Thanks to Austin and the Forms Committee and the Executive Committee and Nick Kermitis that drafted these forms. If you have any questions, 803-772-5206. Uh, you can ask for Byron King or Austin Smallwood. Our emails are byron at screaltors.org or austin at screaltors.org. Signing off. Merry Christmas.